wanted to show you guys my pipe. I'm smoking, um, it's a beautiful pipe, uh, smokes well, it's uh, made by Peter Stokeby. Really nice, really nice grain, really comfortable in the mouth and smokes well. Wow, there's a lot of people here. So we'll see. So, um, here in Portland, uh, in what's called the park blocks, um, it's a, kind of a historical district uh, with some old churches, museums, and um, just up the way here um, is a university. So, I wanted to come here and uh, talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the founding of Portland. thought you might find that interesting. And then I'll show you the tobacco I'm smoking. Mm. When um, when Portland was founded um, it was a, an area that had been inhabited by uh, many um, Native American tribes, uh, most notably the Chinook and Cascade, lived all throughout this region. And inevitably, uh, European settlers would come, and they did. Um, it was a large, very large um, area of originally like uh, fur trading, trapping, uh, but it was a big trade area um, in this in this whole region here and it has uh, uh, two rivers, uh, the Columbia and the Willamette, that come together here so it was a big um, area where trading and shipping happened. Um, so um, a lot of people came to this area uh, in the early 19th century and of course with European development or at least a few of the developers they came here and started clearing uh, the land down by the river to uh, make it easier for uh, trading and shipping and so it became known in the beginning as just the clearing so there was forests throughout this whole area and then down by the river, uh, it began to be cleared away. Um, and so that's why they called it the clearing. After some time though, um, it's a long story, but I'll try to shorten it. Two uh, major developers uh, from the East Coast, uh, Asa, Lovejoy, and Pettigrove, um, were both the largest uh, developers in the area, so um, they wanted to make um, a town here, um, a, eventually a city. And so they began developing it and uh, buildings were built. Um, at first, small shacks and uh, outposts like that. And then uh, in the early 19th century, um, they started building stone and brick and, and larger buildings like that. But when it came time to name this area, instead of using 
the name of the clearing they wanted to name it and um, Lovejoy was from um, was from Massachusetts and he wanted to call the city Boston and uh, Pettigrove was from Maine uh, Portland and he wanted to call it uh, Portland of course so to um, get that d dispute uh, over with, they took this. Well, this is a coin, but this is a tobacco coin. They didn't take that. They took this. They took a coin and they flipped it. And as history would have it, Pettigrove won and the city was named Portland, and it's been that since uh, the coin toss in 1845. Um, and so, um, the, te the clearing became Portland, and the city began to grow. became one of the biggest um, shipping areas um, on the on the west coast of the US and uh, there's a museum here um, and I want to show you that right across behind me that still has um, the original coin that was tossed to decide the name of the city. Let me show you. Mm, the light's going to be bad. Get in a better position. So this is the building. It is a museum. It is um, the Oregon Historical Society. And this is where the original coin that was tossed in 1845 to decide the name of the city Portland, whether it was going to be called Boston or Portland. So, that's a short summary of uh, the founding, the beginning, the naming of the city here. But uh, let me go and show you what I'm smoking. So, yeah, I am smoking some cabbage mixture. Yes, see that? There's no tin description, but it's a, a blend of various um, Virginias, some bright, some red, some other Virginias, and some Perique. And the blend is very, uh, very sweet with just, just an undertone of the spiciness of the Perique. Mm. The preek is just there to um, to lend just like another dimension and to um, to add to the sweetness of the Virginias, and uh, the sweetness of the Virginias uh, are mainly um, not so much to me a citrus note, but more a little bit deeper than that, more uh, like a, a dried fruit uh, or a uh, a fig, fig note is, is what you get. It's a really good blend. Uh, let me show you the tobacco. I already showed you that it is a coin, but it's kind of a rough coin cut. And I smoked a lot of this already. Let me see if I can show you. Without spilling it. So it's a really nice cut.
some really nice coins, but uh, like a lot of um, Samuel Gawith uh, blends, it's pretty rough, uh, rough cut. And also with the um, the blends from uh, Samuel Gawith, um, they tend to be on the moist side, uh, but this one is um, less moist than most um, blends from Samuel Gawith tend to be. So it's it can tend to um, have a little bit of moisture in it, but uh, if you let it dry um, just a little bit, I think that's all you really need with this with this um, blend. So. I think that's it. Uh, hope you guys are well, enjoying your pipes. Um, I hope you guys have some good weather and you're able to get out and enjoy a pipe, a walk, or whatever, wherever you are. And hope you guys are well. And we'll talk to you again.